So, you know when there's a 3D trick question in the Year 11 paper, um, we always get into this mad scramble to avoid marking it. It's because there's all these interesting diagrams that arise. Some might be alright, might look like this. Some might be a little bit messier. And some could be just really, really three-dimensional. <laughs> the two-dimensional planes that are perpendicular to each other just like when we can recognize this like the back of our hands but as we know this kind of three-dimensional thinking doesn't develop overnight so what I'd like to share with you today are five activities that um, you can take away and use with your stage four classes stage four and five classes um, to help students better visualize three-dimensional spaces and um, represent this three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional paper so the first one is um, Lolly, real world. Um, so this is a task. The Lolly company wants you to design a carton for them that will fit exactly 18. <coughs> um, the lollies have to be one centimeter deep, two centimeters in diameter. They're all identical. The carton needs to fit on an A4 piece of cardboard um, to aid production, as little cutting as possible. And um, you have to include in the glue flaps to adhere the sides together. Um, and then some student work samples may look like this. So this student has done just a good old um, rectangular prism. And he said that if I have everything on one level, three by six makes it a little bit too thin and too flexible, he argues. So he's made it three by three by two. Good idea. Um, this student has just tried to make the biggest cube that he could fit and it was six by six by six. And I like his argument there. He says, it will look like you get a load of candy in the middle of the which is fair enough. And then some students with a bit more of a um, technical flair for design and art has a time to shine. If this carton is neat and attractive, the size, of the, the size of the cartons will be nice and big for graphics for the candy product details. Second activity, packing a truck. So, um, Simple, um, really, really simple problem. The truck has um, space in it that's 245 by 250 by 890, just um, picks of numbers that don't really work, don't have many um, perfect factors. Then they've got um, boxes that are identical and you can put them around and fit them in any which way. And um, the question is, what's the most number of boxes you can fit into it? Um, so it's got to do with using the space efficiently, using the volume and picturing how many um, boxes can, can fit in which direction. Um, so recently over the Easter long weekend my family went on a road trip and I thought I'd help by packing the boot of the car. And my dad came and went, oh thanks Jackie, and proceeded to take everything out and pack it again because apparently it's a little bit neater. I don't see why he did it, but it's kind of like a game of Tetris. Um, so why not turn it into a game of Tetris for students, give them a couple of blocks um, then they can create a, a scale model of the back of the car and little boxes that they can um, physically try to fit in each direction. Um, student work samples may look like this. Each of the boxes directions and each of the um, cars, the truck space um, dimensions, they start thinking about um, factors and inevitably they start drawing in three dimensions. Um, another activity designing a three-dimensional object in two dimensions. So a really simple one is design a new sports bag for the school. And to make it simple, just a cylindrical <coughs> shape. Um, we've got circular ends of 11 inches and the bag itself, it has to be 20 inches. And you have to allow for a um, seam so that you can sew the whole thing together. And you can also talk about if this is a roll of fabric, how can we make sure that we save resources? So for example, laid on these three um, on the floor, we've got five um, rectangles that are the same. Which way would you put it to save space? To use the length of the fabric, they'll probably say C, hopefully. Then um, when they lay out the, the body of the bag, they probably would do it this way to save space. And here we go. Uh, a sample. 
Um, fourth activity is um, thinking about taking 2D slices through 3D um, objects. And one way to picture this is to um, imagine that there's a solid filled with empty solid, um, hollow solid, filled with water, and imagine there's a little hole punctured at the bottom of it and think about the water draining out of it. So this one's a simple example. The top of the, the surface of the water would be identical. It would be just surface. But if you have some different solids, say the top um, container is draining into the bottom one, as the bottom one is draining, the surface is changing. So it's growing, then it's getting narrower. So get them to draw it, draw it. hopefully it goes uh, narrow, then wider, then back narrow again. And then the task here is to match cards together. So the original um, shapes could be all different, and then get them to think about how the surface of the water changes. And there are student cards um, already available, but then have some spaces where they have to fill some shapes in. Um, the fifth activity is always a crowd favorite, um, jelly bean guessing contest. How many are there in the jar? Support it with maths, make a poster. Um, if there's two the same, you can say, bring in a bit of sampling and estimation, how many black jelly beans are in the, are in the jar. Um, and to support this, they have to say, well, if I drew it out, this by this by this, and if they think about it a little bit more, the jelly beans um, can kind of stack into the nooks and crannies of the layer underneath. So how does that change things? And think about volumes that way. So five activities. Hopefully if we do this in stages four and five, we get less of this and more of this. <laughs>